This is the first tiny house hotel in the United States. So, welcome to Caravan. Hi. Hey. Hi. Welcome, welcome. Wow. Caravans are mobile homes on wheels. Caravan is a group of people set up in a circle that are creating a space. Travelers, we think of caravanning when we travel and are on the road. So hi, hi there. welcome to Rosebud at Caravan. This okay. is the smallest of the three, but the coziest. Okay. The sweetest. And um, so this is a queen size bed. Okay. They see there's a window up there? There is. Okay. Yeah, and there's also a window up there. Oh. For your luggage, you can move the ladder over here and then okay. just put your luggage up there. Okay. We're serving as a hotel, so it's different than living here. There's a bunch of storage here. But for a lot of people, this really does showcase that they maybe actually could live in a space this big. You've got shelving, you've got this up here. These all open um, in our service storage here. Culturally, all over the world, people have lived in tiny houses and caravans, and you know, it isn't new, really. It's new to have it on a parking lot in the middle of a city, that's for sure, but it's not a new application of living and housing. I think the story starts way back. For me, honestly, it started when I was 14 and I moved to the basement, turned that into this little, you know, funky place. And um, I own this house right here. I've owned it for about 10 years. And this lot for years was a repo lot. So repossessed cars were here. This parking lot, we actually had completely excavated. In terms of the hookup, this is the water hookup. So that hooks up to the city's water system. We have hot running water, flushable toilets. Um, this is the electric panel. And then this is the vent pipe for the sewage. So there are six of these hookup spots set up like an RV park, but it's definitely not an RV park. Each tiny house is on a trailer bed. We're not permitted to build a permanent, any permanent structures at all. So this is actually why we're able to do what we're doing, because they're on wheels. Was it difficult to get permits? Oh gosh. You know, the truth is it was extremely difficult, but only um, because there was no precedent for it. No code, nothing that really existed. Tiny houses on a lot hooked up to city systems don't exist. And so we had to find people in the city that would help us figure out a zoning designation that would work. So we are designated as a recreation park, the lot itself. It's not a recreation vehicle park. It's not an RV park. There's a huge difference when you put the word vehicle in. If, you, if it's an RV park, we, have, we would have to have waste water, storm water management. We'd have to have parking lines, a whole slew of things that we don't have. The tiny houses themselves are designated as traveler's accommodations, which is a hotel designation. So this is the hotel on what's essentially an urban campground. So this is our sweet little rosebud. Um, we named it Rosebud because this is the Rose City. And um, we wanted to have names that reflect the kind of special things about Portland. Rosebud, I believe, is about 100 square feet. We are leasing these tiny houses from local people who have built them and made them. This was built by a man named Hal. His wife was very sick and he had never built anything and he had to stay at home to be with her. And he just decided to build a tiny house. And this is the first one. And if you look closely at the amazing details and I mean, this is so well built and so beautiful. But he had a, like a lot of cool features like the mason jar lights. We're really honored to have this on our property. So our kitchens, we have refrigerate, refrigerators in each kitchen. Ta-da! We have microwaves. You know, we're not thrilled about microwaves in general, but they serve the purpose of a guest hotel to just be able to heat something up real quick. Um, we do have uh, burners. So this is a, uh, just a very tiny house kind of table. Um, it pulls out, the table flips up. It's got two stools built into it that pull out. Part of the appeal of having them as mobile structures is that we can take them in and out and rotate 
our stock so that we can showcase all different types of, of tiny houses. Okay, so welcome to the Pearl. Uh, the Pearl is kind of our, our modern, sleek, uh, tiny house. This was designed and built by Shelterwise, their local company. So we're showcasing their first tiny house. This design does have a table. It's like on a hydraulic pump and it pulls up and down here. So this is really cool design. It's kind of the way an RV. So there's like different pieces. This comes out as a bench and then the cushions go up into a, a bench. It's an amazing design, but for us with guests coming and going, it doesn't work to have the table open. So we just decided to make this into a full-time bed. Pearl sleeps three. That's our little twin mattress there. Okay, so this is storage. Um, another closet and more storage here. This is a pull-out table. One of the only things I had to buy from Ikea. So the bathroom is a wet bath and the shower head is here above the toilet. So everything in here gets wet. So when you go to the bath, I mean, when you take a shower here, you could do both at once if you were so inclined. But um, assuming you don't want to do that when you take a shower, you would just take the shower head and stand over here. Um, so everything gets wet. Do people have problems with that at all? Are they? You know, less than I would know, not really. I mean, I think there have been a few people that would prefer not to have a wet bath or not to have the toilet in their shower, so to speak. But generally speaking, people coming to a tiny house hotel expect that they're gonna be kind of funky, interesting things to negotiate, and that's part of why they wanna have the experience. So this is the tandem. This is our largest and most requested, and I, I don't know, we don't know why yet, but we sure love this. <laughs> this one really shows that it can feel very spacious to be in a structure that's under 200 square feet. This is about 160 square feet. We have a day bed. This whole thing pulls out and becomes essentially a king size bed. And then in the loft, there's a queen size bed. So this sleeps four comfortably. We actually had a family of five from Ireland stay here for three or four nights and they loved it. I think actually this really does showcase that it can feel very spacious to be in a, in a structure that's under 200 square feet. <laughs> I first encountered this house on Craigslist. It was a shell. It was, the framing was up, it was sheathed and it was wrapped. It was a good deal. It was a neat little start to the project. So I did a large part of the interior and exterior finish work on this house. I've always loved small spaces and I think the first time I really got excited about it was when I was about eight years old and my family did a road trip down through Oregon we stayed in a boxcar and I thought that was the greatest little house and I wanted to live in something like that someday. This little house has a bath where the toilet and shower are separate. It has a little pocket door that slides across. Is that salvage? It is. Yeah, there were quite a few, most of the materials for this house were found on Craigslist and were kind of the ends of a project. Somebody didn't need, for instance, all the paneling and so they were selling the paneling on Craigslist. The shower uh, we tiled, which is something that I wasn't really sure about. Most tiny houses that are intended to be fairly mobile don't use tile because it's heavy, because it's fragile, it's breakable, because of its rigidity. But the guy who, who taught me the tile said, we'll move it really, really carefully. <laughs> and it's been fine. I feel like this summer I was kind of a Jill of all trades and mistress of none. But it's fun in a little house to, uh, to have that experience of being able to try so many different things. A lot of people my age don't ever want to own a home or they don't think they'll ever be able to own a home. And so the American dream that has been constructed around home ownership and being able to pull yourself up by your bootstraps, work really hard, and get everything you want doesn't really make sense when what we've been taught to want is so commercially consumer-based. Should we make a pot of tea? You know, this idea of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness versus life, liberty, and the pursuit of property. You know, they got conflated at some point and we've equated happiness and property, but I think a lot of people are starting to recognize that the two do not necessarily equate with one another and that not only is it difficult to own property, in some cases it's impossible and it might not even be what we want. 
So I'm meeting more and more people my age who are interested in building a tiny house, not necessarily because it's the only house they'll ever have, but because for them it's a, a way to have a place of their own in a way that they simply wouldn't be able to if they were trying to do it in the traditional, the traditional market, I guess. You ready? Yeah. There are about 10 of us right now that either own, are currently building, or are planning to build soon a tiny house and are interested in living in community. And we're grateful to people like Deb and Cole who've worked with the city of Portland to pioneer this. We hope that something along these lines might be the first step for us to actually get set up to have a tiny house community. A lot of people are contacting us from other cities that want to do something similar. What we've been able to do is what should be easy to make happen. Whether it's for a hotel, whether it's for people who want to live in community like Lina, or whether it's for people who know they want to have a home. It's very hard. There's no, what we did in Portland, we would love to say, here's what you do. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's completely, you know, depends on the city and the codes. Mm -hmm. And it would be really amazing if there was some kind of framework that could, mm -hmm. or structure on a national level that would apply to all cities.